Okay, thank you for joining us for part two. Um, so as I was saying, that for any group to uh, maintain the blessing or the guidance, um, they need to be really in concert with the force or the power which is guiding them. So they need to be united in, in purpose, in goal. And here we come to a very interesting thing, because what is the purpose of a larger group of people? What is the purpose of a company? And in the past we've seen many uh, collectives which had higher goals. We've seen artist collectives, artist communities, uh, we've seen religious communities uh, be formed, we've seen knightly orders uh, to take form, we've seen political parties take form. Um, but ultimately if we look around like what is really inspiring or guiding most of the collectives currently present on earth it is mainly greed, it is mainly money um, and this is true for governments who strive to yeah, gain as much resources and power for their country, for their people and it's also true for commercial companies um, who are being used by shareholders also to amass money, to amass power. But ultimately we have to realize that our world is a closed system. There is a limited amount of resources and, well, except for a few meteorites with land on Earth, the amount of resources don't really change. They're transformed. You can transform Earth into harvests and um, uh, but ultimately the am amount is more or less constant. There is a constant influx and outflux of energies, both on a physical level in the form of radiation and uh, on a, also an energetic level in the forms of energies coming to the earth and leaving the earth. But ultimately it is not within our power to really change the influx and the outflux. We can't make the sun shine more or we can't in a way make more spirits come to the earth or more spirits leave the earth very easily. So if we accept that we are in a zero-sum game then our efforts to get more and more and more means that other persons are getting less and less and less. Uh, so we have to think about it. Is our current system, our capitalist system, which is focused on competition, really the best way or the best guidance for us to move our race forward, to move our planetary consciousness forward. Because these are the powers we are attracting, because this is what we are busy with. If I as an employee am there because I want to make money, I want to get a nice house, I want to go on a holiday, um, then this is also the type of spirit which we draw into the company to guide us, to inspire us. But the thing is that the spirit which we attract and the people we attract, they're not interested in making me rich, they're interested in making themselves rich. So in a way they are, they are a mirror image of ourselves. So if we call companies evil, and they might very well be evil, it's not so much because um, it is evil by nature or because of its size, but because we attract evil or selfish energies into such a company, into such a collective. And ultimately, um, we might not like it anymore, because we, the evil which starts to serve us, because we ask it to come to guide us, to inspire us, in the end ends up using us as its tools. Because the collective becomes more import important than the individual. So we, you can go two ways with this. One of the ways is to say, like, gosh, we need to go move to a smaller scale, keep things under a thousand uh, employees for, per collective and uh, this way it can be done in a very human fashion. There can be a person responsible and this person is accountable and this person is able to deal with it. So then you have a very human-centered society, a very uh, individual-centered society. The problem with that is that people don't trust each other. People always think that I can do better, why should they have the position or they have the control, I want it. And people tend to rebel against monarchies. And this is why we have uh, oligarchies, why we have groups. Because people have this illusion that, gosh, if I work hard enough, if I maneuver myself hard enough, if I kiss enough asses, lick enough boots, 
then I can be one of the leaders, I can be one of the elite and have all the advantages. And ultimately, it is possible, but this is through a process of transformation. So in a way, you have to lose yourself to gain power, uh, which is very different actually from where humanity is trying to go, which basically is to develop yourself and to develop also internal power, internal authority, if you will. So you don't need to have so much outside guidance or outside authority governing you as much. But the attraction of guidance is very important to us because we used to be very aware of who we would follow, who is our king, who is our president, who is our priest or priestess. But nowadays we are moving away in a way from these central structures and we are no, look, look, no longer looking towards a central figure but we are still being inspired by the culture which we create around us, which we indirectly create by attracting certain forces to ours and to our planet. And this is basically what needs to change by changing our own nature, by changing our own goals. We start to get a very different type of government, a very different type of inspiration within companies, which is yeah, more suitable to our life here, which is, as I said, uh, uh, zero-sum game. So if we accept that we are in a place which has a zero-sum game, then the importance becomes how to reach an optimum. How to reach an optimum amount of people, an optimum use of the resources by all beings. And with people I also mean the animals and the plants and the fish and all the other spiritual beings which are non-corporeal. So in a way, it's a little bit like uh, like gardening. Um, so you have a kind of a view, what is the best structure, what is the best way to organize things. We can't understand that about our planet for ourselves, at least not yet. Our knowledge and our human minds are uh, incapable even to govern several thousand people, let alone the billions of creatures which crawl around in and under the earth. Um, so we need to rely on these higher powers until eventually we, we can yeah, become higher powers ourselves. And to do that we need uh, to draw their attention. So we need to form collectives which are in a way dedicated to working with certain of these powers and then taking control uh, over certain yeah, parts of our world. But we have to also realize that even though that on a physical level we may be in control, on an inspirational level we are not in control. We are, in a way, the manifestation of a deity or of angels or of the Holy Spirit. But for such a power to remain with us and to remain with us as a guiding force, uh, we need to really um, create a very good vessel, a very good grail, with which to capture these, uh, these influences so that these higher powers will feel happy to be with us and to stay with us. Because if there's too much disharmony, too much impurity, then the higher powers and the higher vibrations will flee from us and we will be stuck with lower material vibrations only. And uh, so in a way by changing our own nature we can create a positive spiral of yeah, higher beings guiding us upward, or a negative spiral of lower beings guiding us downward. And it is our own nature, in a way, which determines the evilness or the goodness of the structures which we build. There are a few more intricacies to this, because any place where power accumulates tends to attract the, the dark side of the cosmos, and also the Arimanic side of the cosmos. And if we don't want the, yeah, the dark side of the cosmos or the harmonic side of the cosmos to really monopolize all larger groups, then we need to have a counterforce. Because it's in a way a law of nature that the dark side of the cosmos is attracted to power. And also the large things are in a way um, need to be governed so they attract this harmonic influences. So we need a counterweight. So these other influences, the higher influences of the Luciferical, 
the nature cosmos and the unfallen cosmos are also attracted to such companies. And I talked to uh, about this with a spiritual master, and he pointed out that um, in the past, um, government buildings, um, in a way, always had also a, a chapel or a church or um, something like that connected to it. So there would be priests or nuns or monks or uh, scientists, people who would receive these higher impulses, which would counterbalance the more material impulses, which are naturally engaged in government. But modern government doesn't listen as much anymore to priests or priestesses or to, to science. Uh, so they become very unbalanced. They become very open to this Arimanic impulse, to the dark cosmos, and they don't attract these light impulses anymore. And this is why big companies and big governments tend to uh, become corrupted much more easily. Also in the construction of a building, um, a good government building should be built like a, a cathedral or a church. There should be a magnet um, for these higher powers, which attracts the higher powers. So in many churches, in the crypt, there's the body of a saint or some other relics, which are, in a way, by their own nature, already a doorway to, uh, to higher spheres of, uh, of consciousness. And these higher spirits feel attracted to such doorways, and they come to live in such a building. So also our government buildings should inco incorporate such structures and also the corporate headquarters for these big mega companies should incorporate such structures if we want to get a truly representative government and also if we want the company to truly represent the people who live there instead of becoming a dark cosmos arimanic parody of the, the actual influence of the people. So it requires a lot of um, change in thought about uh, what a company headquarters should be like, what business buildings should be like, and how to deal with concentrations of power, the precautions we should take uh, when creating such a concentration of power. Um, something which is also very important basically uh, safeguards. In another video I also spoke about vows. So things which you know are to be ungood or beyond your possibility to deal with well and you in a way allow another power to guide you or protect you. So if we look at knightly orders they often had vows of poverty, of chastity, of obedience. Um, and these vows basically were necessary to prevent the ego from taking control over our lives, over our vibrations, over our actions and over the power which we wield. So for instance, if I'm um, uh, a noble in medieval times and I rule over an area, if I'm ruled by my passions, by my greed, by my lust, uh, I will not be a very good king or a very good baron. For the people. But if I manage to protect myself by using vows and saying like, gosh, I will not um, yeah, try to use my power to enrich myself or to get more women or um, get even more power, then I can devote, uh, uh, I'm, I can more easily devote myself to my people because my spirit in a way sees all other spirits as brothers and sisters to work together with while my ego is in a state of competition with the other people. So our leadership should in a way be relatively um, egoless. And if you look for instance at uh, the Native American society there they had uh, some races, some uh, nations had a rule that if a person fought in a war, they could never become a chief or a leader because they tend to see things in black and white, as in my side and their side. And they tend to see things in, yeah, from a perspective of fear and power and struggle. And thereby they would be very bad leaders because they would attract the wrong impulses, the wrong guidance, and they would lead the people in the wrong way. And if we look at how politics is now functioning, it's basically an arena. It's a rat race. 
and there's a very nice saying uh, even if you win the rat race you're still a rat and by the way our political system works only rats will survive and the biggest rat will win so we need to really change our method of leadership our method of politics so that we can get good quality people in the places where we want them to be and we can't leave this to the leaders who are already caught up in a system and who are already transformed by that system and we have to in a way protect our leaders from the influences of those systems our leaders need us to change our structure to change our world so they can keep on functioning without being corrupted or twisted by the positions they take or by the system they need to become a part of and I feel that this change of systems really needs to come from the bottom up how people organize themselves and how they consciously make choices about organization knowing full well the dangers both on a political level on a social level but also on an energetical level on a spiritual level of wielding power so the persons who are to wield power they need to be strong but they cannot be governed by their egos they cannot be governed by duality they cannot be governed by too low impulses they have to be able to attract these higher impulses and they have to be nourished with these higher impulses they need beauty they need art they need love because if a person has to live in a place where there's only fighting and lying and struggling sooner or later their spirit will wither away and weaken and the ego will take over thank you for listening god bless you